Good morning, everyone. It's not, it's not worship service yet. We have five minutes. Uh, yeah, it's good morning. So in these five minutes before worship, let's prepare our hearts to begin this worship service, which is just going to start in like four and a half minutes, maybe. Let's quiet our hearts, open our minds, dismiss all of the distractions of the world, all the difficulties and all the disappointments and all the tragedies of life, just forget them. And focus on the goodness of the Lord, his generosity, his grace, and his love. So let's invite the Holy Spirit to surround us, for we are God's people. We are his creation, we're made in his image, and we are his church. We love the Lord and everything he made. We love each other. So I wrote this song a few years ago about God's love and the love we have for the Lord and each other. Um, and it's a love that we can express through the church, God's church. So feel free to sing along. I think the words are up there. Or just listen and contemplate the power and the goodness of God's love that can shine brightly through the community of believers that is the church. darkness hides the day and the madness reigns where the people seem to lost their way there's a special place where the light of love shines brightly through and the hand of grace will come to rest on you the church is where believers share their faith in Jesus, the sweetness of a Christian love. Because the church is people living in love, sharing the love, spreading the love of God. When times are bad, we face the Maker. We come together.
church's people live in the love, sharing the love, spreading the love of God. Because the church's people live in the love, sharing the love, spreading. Welcome, everybody. We are glad that you are here to worship with us. I'd like to make a few uh, announcements before we start. First of all, please turn off your cell phones or mute the audio for those worshiping here in person. And for those who are, are watching us on the, on the Zoom or the web, please turn off or mute your audio. But please turn on your uh, video so we can see your happy faces. For those worshiping here in person, you may want to wear your mask that the LA County uh, has required during the COVID period. The country is declaring that the COVID period is over and will be uh, soon uh, excusing us from not uh, uh, requiring us to wear mask in public. Nursery is provided. For those who, with children, with the infants, and uh, a video is also provided so you can watch the service in, with your infant. For those who have been, are here for the first time, entering through the main uh, suite 702 from the doors, the lady and men's restroom are on your right side as you enter the worship room, double doors. And for those who enter through the single door on 703, the restroom is co-ed. Uh, it's just past the kitchen uh, door on your left. Okay. The children and young people will be dismissed uh, for the classes when it is announced. So good morning, Lord and everyone. Let us begin this day together. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And let us give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for the loving kindness is everlasting. I'd like to continue the call to worship with the reading of the lyrics of the song, This Is My Story, also known as Blessed Assurance. It goes like this. This is the story, this is my song, praising the Savior all day long. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a... Ta uh, what a taste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of the Spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all day, day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture burst on my sights. Angels ascend descending. During from above, bringing echoes of mercy, whisper of love. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of the Spirit, washed in his blood. Oh, this is my story. Oh, this is my story. Praising my Savior all the day long. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you that we can tell others our story, your gift of life, and for all the overflowing blessings you have showered on us. Thank you so much for taking care of us and our family. May you bless this day and days ahead and guide us wherever we go. May the Holy Spirit lead us onto the path of righteousness and grace and open, the, and open our hearts in this worship service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Richard. Thank you for reading our worship set. We can die now. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, am, uh, I am not Evelyn Lee. 
As you can tell, I'm taller. Most of you know that I'm Doug Wu, and it's June 2023, and this church is about 35 years old, and I have been an attender and a member since the beginning. And I've played keyboard with the worship team, and I've sang songs to the piano, as you know. But in the decades that I've been here, I have, I think this is the first time I have led worship service at church. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you'll have to bear with me. I'm a beginner, and, uh, but thankfully we have a wonderful team here. We have Sandra and Monica and Conrad, Jules and Carol, and they have made it all a lot easier. So let's exalt the Lord and lift his name on high. Let's please stand if you're able. And to begin, let's join together and you can be part of the band. <laughs> let's clap. One. Exercise. Let's uh, focus our hearts and unify our voice as we invite the Holy Spirit to surround us. One, two, three, four. Spirit like a dove 
When we think of beauty, we think of, I've got to move this here, down here. We think of natural beauty, the world that God has created, majestic mountains, the roaring surf as it crashes against the rocky shore, delicate, colorful flowers, bright, starry skies. But our Savior Jesus is beautiful too. Maybe not in the physical and aesthetic sense, but instead the beauty of the Lord is in his selfless love and his humble servanthood. He's our model and our aspiration to love and to serve. How beautiful is that? It's for 
Thank you, worship team. How beautiful is the body of Christ. And it was a wonderful song and made me reminisce um, a lot because I knew that song from a long time ago. But that was great. How beautiful the body of Christ is. Well, welcome, everybody, and thank you for being here today. And today we're celebrating Graduation Sunday. And we'll be showing a video, and then after that I will present some gifts and we'll pray for the graduates. Let's give a round of applause to the 2023 20, graduates. Um, I'd like to have the three graduates come up, and we'll present them something from the church. So Madeline, James, and Monica, if you could come up here, please.
comic raus, dann ist nämlich das Tier Sex. Und ein Pilger Ding. Seit Wolken. So now that we're pursuing different adventures, different journey in life right now. And if I can ask Pastor Chris to come up and say a prayer for the graduates. Thank you. All right, let's pray together. Lord God, we praise you for the stages of life that we are blessed to pass through. Lord, we thank you for... Uh, the families and children of this congregation, Lord, that you have blessed us with. Lord, we thank you for the opportunities that uh, have been placed before them. We thank you for the ways that they have uh, made choices in their lives and um, chosen to take advantage of opportunities and blessings that you have provided, Lord. And so now at this milestone moment of uh, graduation and looking forward to what is next, Lord, we give you thanks and praise. We remember your your faithfulness to us. And Lord God, we know your promises to us that you have good plans for each one of us to give us a hope and a future, Lord God. And so I lift up each one of these graduates, James and Monica and Madeline, lift them up to you. I know that you know and love each one of them intimately, that you desire to be a central part of their lives, Lord. And so, Lord, I pray that you will continue to move in their hearts, that they will look to you, that they will put their hope in you. Um, Lord, we pray that you will open doors for them, places where uh, they can uh, be a blessing to others, just as they have been blessed, where they can put to good use uh, the talents uh, that you've given them and the skills that they have developed, uh, the knowledge that they have pursued, Lord God. We pray that you will use them in very meaningful and fulfilling ways, Lord. And most of all, Lord, we pray that they will keep their eyes on you, that they will continue to follow your leading, um, and that they will see wherever you take them, Lord, as um, an opportunity to serve you and your kingdom. So be with them, and we look forward with eager anticipation, Lord, to um, witnessing the continuing good work that you're doing in their lives. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right. Um, okay, after, sir, do you want to take a picture now, Evelyn? Would you like? You can, yeah, okay. Okay, later on we can take another picture, and then we have a cake outside, so if you guys can be outside before we cut the cake, too. Okay, thank you. Good thing I wear my name tag so I know who I am. <laughs> Name Bill Yee. I will read from the first Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 to 27. <clears throat> For just as the body is in one and has many members, and all the members of the body, through many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greek, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of all many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the heirs would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. That would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? And it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eyes cannot say to the hand, I have no need for you. Or nor, again, the head to the feet, I have no need for you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we chose with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with great respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this, 
but God has so arranged the body, given the greater honor to the inferior members, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffer, all suffer together with it. If one member is honor, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and the individually member of it. Thank you. May God add his blessing to his reading. Well, this is a, a fun day, fun to share and celebrate with our graduates, uh, fun to celebrate with Doug Wu, his new experience of leading worship for us. So thank you, and thanks to all of the, the band. Uh, all this is a, a, a great expression. I was just talking with Karen earlier and saying how much um, I appreciate that at this, in this congregation there's a, a sense of sharing of ministry and taking on responsibility to participate in leading in the life of this church. Um, I've been a part of uh, other congregations where uh, things were very much leaning on the, the official professionals. You know, they were, if anything had to be done, it had to be somebody who was uh, a professional, somebody who had been trained to do it. And I really think, and, and this is a firm conviction, that we're getting a lot closer to what the Bible actually talks about what the church is when we think about every member being a minister. That there's not just one minister and there's not just a professional staff, but there's a much more organic sense that the body of Christ is made up of many who are all bringing and expressing their gifts of the Holy Spirit. So today our passage, as we continue kind of in this season of um, learning and, and reminding ourselves about the Holy Spirit, about what God is doing in our lives through the Holy Spirit, today we're talking about the body. We're talking about the body of Christ, which, Scripture says, is all of us together. We are the body of Christ. And the human body is just sort of the example, the metaphor that uh, Apostle Paul is using to describe the body of Christ in this passage. So some of you have had, I'm sure many of you have had experiences of some kind of physical pain that you've had. Maybe it's just a really, really bad toothache that you've had. And you know how it doesn't just sort of stay in that one spot. Like, I've, I've had some toothaches before where, you know, I bite down on something and I feel this pain over in the other side of my mouth. And I go, what, what's that all about? And someone says, oh, that's sympathetic nerves. I said, sympathetic nerves, yeah. This nerve over here is feeling sorry for that nerve over there and sort of going along with it. But it actually is an illustration of how interconnected all the parts of our body are. We don't notice it when things are going well, right? And when everything is just going smoothly, we don't have this sense that all the different parts are operating uh, as they're supposed to, dependent upon one another. I had another example of this uh, earlier in the year when I was going through chemotherapy for uh, the cancer that I had last fall. Um, they were just kind of doing this just in case uh, chemotherapy on me. And I was, uh, take, I was doing these infusions and then taking this oral medication wasn't experiencing a lot of extreme side effects other than some fatigue, but one interesting one that I did experience was neuropathy, and that is some tingling and numbness in uh, fingers and toes. And strangely, it expressed itself even more so when I came into contact with cold. So I would go and I wasn't thinking and I'd go and I would open the refrigerator and I would reach in and I would grab something and if it was glass I would touch it and immediately my whole hand would just be starting to tingle and kind of go crazy. It was almost as if I had touched something hot. Unfortunately there are some lingering effects of this. Not in my hands but in my feet. Uh, my feet, uh, I've, I've got some uh, 
numbness there that feels like when I'm walking around and I'm, it's like I've got sand in my shoes all the time. You know, I always want to like take my shoes off and empty them out, get whatever's in there out of there and put them back on, but then it feels just the same. So it's a, it's a mild kind of lingering thing. It might go away, it might not. But it's a reminder to me that everything that goes on in one part of the body affects what goes on in the other part of the body as well. So we live in a society of, of great specialization these days, medical specialization, uh, where you've got more and more medical professionals deciding, hey, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to focus in on you know, the heart, or I'm just going to focus in on the brain, or the skin, or whatever organ it might be. And perhaps some of you have had this experience. I've had family members who had to go to one doctor for one issue, and this doctor prescribed them some medication, and then they had another issue, and they went to this other doctor who specialized in another part of the body and got a different set of medications, and then went somewhere else, and pretty soon they had all this stuff going, and it seemed like these people aren't talking to each other. They're each just in their own compartment doing their own thing. And fortunately, we're having a, more of a movement towards holistic medicine, realizing that all of this is interconnected. We need to be looking at the whole thing and not just the parts. Well, the same thing is true when we think about the church. The church is, as we look at it, an organization. And you could compare it to other organizations where well, we've got a building, we've got a time that we meet, we've got some staff, and then we have members. Members who probably uh, went through some kind of class, maybe signed something, decided to become a part. There's certain expectations that go with membership. But we can also think of these things as very individualistic, like I want to become a member of the church. And we can think of it the same way as I want to be a member of the bowling league. And I want to be a member of whatever sorts of things that you might have joined. The word member actually goes back, we think of it in terms of joining something and be having membership, but the word member is actually taken from the body. The body has different members. We can look at fingers, hands, arms. These are the different members that we have, but they all go together to create one thing. And this is what Paul wants to say here to these believers, because apparently they had many of the same issues that we have today. Although I think, I'll just say this as an aside, modern Western culture in particular is very individualistic. We think of everything in terms of how it affects me as a person first and foremost, and deciding what I want to be a part of and what I don't want to be a part of, rather than thinking in terms, first of all, that I am a part of this, whether it's family, tribe, nation, and in this case, the body of Christ. For just as the body is one, but has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, they form one body, so it is with Christ. Friends, we're not called to live our faith alone. When you came to faith, however it happened, when you became a Christian, sometimes we think, this is simply a me, a me and Jesus thing. I have a relationship with Jesus. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. And that's the main thing. And oh, yeah, I can see where it might be a good idea if I were to get together with some other Christians now and then, maybe to encourage each other. But scripture tells us something different. There's something actually much bigger and actually much more exciting is going on. The body of Christ is certainly a metaphor, but there's also a spiritual reality to it. That when we come to Jesus, when we put our faith in Jesus Christ and say, yes, Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior, I belong to you now, 
and we go through baptism, the Apostle Paul says, we were all baptized into one body. Think of it this way. If you had, and I've talked about this before, if you are baptized by immersion, and some of you had that experience, where you actually went down into the water and you came up again, the symbolism there is that you are dying to one thing and you're rising to something else. That you, your old self is dying and you are rising to a new self with new life. But this scripture tells us also that when you were baptized, you came out and you entered into something. Whether you knew it or not, you entered into something. It's kind of like the people of Israel crossing the Red Sea. You know, they went across, they left one place, they crossed through the water, and they ended up somewhere else. And the place that we end up, with after, end up in after our baptism is we end up in the body of Christ, whether we like it or not, whether we want to or not. I had a friend who said, you know what, I love Jesus, but all these people at church are weird. I don't know if I want to be around them. And I was like, well, you know what? The Bible says you don't really have much choice. And by the way, you're weird too. We all come, we bring our uniqueness, we bring with us our baggage, we enter in ideally as works in progress. But we become a member, and this is, I say this actually as very exciting, I think, that God is doing something new. In the Old Testament, God set aside the nation of Israel to be a chosen people, a people that would know him, a people that would serve him, but a people that would be a light to the rest of the world, to show people what life with God looks like and how good it can be and how this is what God intended for all of us. Through Jesus, that is becoming a reality amongst God's people, what we call the church or the body of Christ. When people come to Jesus, they become a part of what God is doing, this new people that he is putting together. Now, the body is a great description of this because the body has lots of different parts. Once you say that you're a part of it, once you acknowledge that, the next thing that we have to acknowledge is that we're all different and we all bring something different to the body. Not only that, but the Spirit works through us in different ways. Each one of us has the Holy Spirit in us. If we say that Jesus is Lord, well, Paul says just in the previous chapter, no one can say that unless the Holy Spirit allows them to. If you have come to Jesus, now you might think it was your choice, and it was. I'm not saying it's not. But it says also that no one can come to Jesus unless the Holy Spirit draws them. So we always give God the credit for taking the initiative with us. That God is at work in your life. God, long before you knew it, was reaching out, touching you, drawing you in with his Spirit, with good plans for you. So now that we're together... The Spirit, the same Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus, is in each one of our hearts. And that is supposed to bind us together in a way that nothing else can. But that same Spirit is going to work through each one of you in a different way. Now this is, we're getting into what we call, or what Scripture calls, spiritual gifts. And we're not going to really talk about that today, because it's a larger topic, and we'll get to that later. But what I just want to say is that God has given you a gift, and God wants to use your gift to bless the other people in the body and to build up the body. So just as a human body has lots of different parts, and it works best when all those parts are healthy and they're all really working the way they should, doing their job. The heart works best when the kidneys are pumping, and so on and so on. 
the body of Christ is designed to work and to be healthy when each one of us, each one of you, are using the gifts and allowing the Spirit to work with you, work through you. So recognizing that you have something to give, something to offer as God works through you is really, really important. And we all need that. Now, Paul goes on this passage to say, now don't compare yourselves to other people. When you look around, just like in the human body, it would be a little bit ridiculous if the foot said, you know what, I'm not a hand. I don't belong to the body. That would not make it not part of the body. It's still part of the body. And if the ear would say, you know what, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body. That would not make it any less part of the body. And he goes on to say, if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? And if the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? I considered having slides this morning with images of this. <laughs> And I thought maybe be a little distracting. But you can kind of use your imagination and picture it not just, not just a, a, a body covered with eyes, but a whole body made up of eyes. It would just be a mess, right? Very difficult to move around, for one thing. Very difficult to hear. And so on and so on. A whole body made of feet or a whole body made of hands. Paul is saying the body is designed the way that God chose to design it. And the body of Christ, God has arranged the members in the body, each one of them, that includes you, each one of them as he chose. He chose you to be a part of the body of Christ. And he chose to give you particular gifts to contribute to the body so that it can work and that can be healthy. But there still is one body and everyone is working towards a common purpose of serving and glorifying God. So don't compare yourself to others. As you have entered into the church now and you're recognizing hopefully that this is more than just a gathering place, that this is actually an expression of who God is for us to be together. It's easy to look around and say, you know what? There are a lot of people here who serve and who are very gifted, and I don't really have anything to contribute. But it's not true. It is true that some people will receive more attention than others, that some people who are standing up here on this stage are literally lifted up a little bit higher in everyone else's view, but not in God's view. When God looks upon the body, he sees everything. He sees the gifts that are out there and obvious in the open, but he sees the gifts that happen behind the scenes as well. And they are all valuable to him. You are valuable to God. And you have much to contribute. You are part of the body. You belong. You are gifted. Congratulations. The same now applies to how we look at each other, right? Because we're culturally trained to consider that some people are more valuable than others. So maybe, and this is just kind of human nature, we look around the room and we make judgments about who is essential, who isn't, who's important, who we really need. Paul is actually kind of being subversive here, because this whole idea of a body was already one that was common in Greek culture, that they would think of the political body. They would think of their nation, their nation state, whatever it was. It was some ideas that the Greek philosophers had come up with to think about the body and different functioning, but they came to a completely different conclusion. Their conclusion was, and some people are much more important than other people. The political body needs some people, and some people are therefore going to have lots of honor and lots of reward. And there are other people who are much less important, and that was how they justified sort of leaving people in slavery and things like that. 
Paul comes to a completely different conclusion in his writings. He says, you know what? The body of Christ is different from the world around us. We look at people differently for a few different reasons, but he wants to challenge our cultural ideas and assumptions about who is important and who isn't. Because every person is created in the image of God, which means just from square one, you have inherent value. And the people all around you have inherent value because they are created in the image of God. They bear that divine stamp. There is something about them that reflects who God is. Beyond that, though, every person is someone that Jesus loves enough that he was willing to die for them just as he died for you. Even if they were the only person in the world, Christ loves each one of us that much. Sometimes it's hard to accept that for ourselves. Sometimes it's hard to believe that he died for that person because that person, for whatever reason, just doesn't to us seem worthy. But through a renewing of our mind, we look at people differently. Each person here shares that same spirit of Jesus. Jesus gave his spirit. Jesus is present with each one of us. Every person is gifted, as we've already said, and has something to give. These are all things that Paul is saying that kind of subvert this and really challenge us. We might be tempted to look down on certain people, but and we might actually not even see people. Some people are invisible to us. But in reality, they are indispensable. They are needed. We need each one here in order to be whole, to be the group, the body that God wants us to be. So precisely for this reason, I would encourage you to go out of your way, perhaps to bless somebody who in the past you haven't, somebody that you have perhaps overlooked. And don't do it in an obvious patronizing way or they'll know what you're doing. Ask God to show you who in the body of Christ is someone who he's calling you to show extra love and respect, just as Jesus would do. You can imagine if Jesus was here in our midst. Well, finally, God is the one who has brought this body together. And so Paul encourages us at the end here, and this kind of goes along with that, you know, when you've got a pain in one part of your body, your whole body suffers. If one member suffers, all of us suffer together. And if one member is honored, all of us rejoice together. This might, again, involve a different way of thinking and having our minds renewed to think of church differently from something that we attend, that we show up for once a week, retraining our hearts and our minds to really look at one another as a body or one of the other metaphors, a family, the family of God, that we are brothers and sisters that just as when someone in your family is hurting or suffering or in need, we're called upon to love and support one another. The same goes for when someone is experiencing something good, we come alongside and we rejoice and we celebrate with them. You know, I have to say this, this includes the larger body of Christ composed of all Christians. I think Paul would probably be scandalized if he were to suddenly drop into modern day uh, Southern California and look at how many different churches there are and say, well, why? Why aren't there so many different churches? Why are you divided up in this way? Why aren't you coming together? Well, you can have organizational unity without spiritual unity. And so I think really the important thing is that we have this sense that we are part of a broader family of Everyone who can say Jesus is Lord. 
We are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are part of the same body of Christ. We share the same Holy Spirit. Christian unity is something that is really important to Jesus. I'm pretty convinced. We let too many things divide us, but I won't get into that right now. I also want to say it doesn't mean that we don't love those who are outside the church. We're not trying to set up an elitist organization that excludes people. But the body of Christ is meant to be a witness to the world of what God's people can look like and the way that they treat one another. Hopefully something that is winsome and attractive that people will look upon and say, wow, those people really love each other. Those people are really committed and faithful to each other. I'm interested in knowing more, or I want to be a part of that. And the welcome is there for those who want to become a part of the body of Christ, the community of God's family. So friends, I'll leave it there. You are a part of the body of Christ. You are gifted. You are essential and indispensable. So remember that. Also remember that the people all around you are also indispensable. That God has called us together with all of our weirdness. God has called us together for a reason. We all share the same spirit. We all share the same commitment to our Lord Jesus. God wants to express his love through us as the body of Christ. That's how we're called to live out our faith in this world. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that you gave your body for us. We thank you that you rose from the dead. Lord, we thank you that you are doing a new work among us, that you have called us to yourself that we are baptized into your body, the body of our King and Messiah. Lord, we thank you for this local expression of your body, South Bay Presbyterian Church. We thank you for 35 years, the legacy of those who had the faithful vision to plant this church in this place. We thank you, Lord, for the legacy of those who have gone before us. And Lord, we thank you for who is here right now in this moment, trusting that you have called us to be here, that no one is here by accident. Lord, I pray that each one here would realize just how important they are in your eyes. And Lord, that you would show us that each one of us is gifted by you, we're joined together, and the body is only whole when each one of us is here. So we thank you, Lord. Thank you for calling us. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your body. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. We are the body of Christ, the church. May we honor the body, honor Jesus. Let's follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Please stand if you are able, and let's ask the Lord to help make us like Jesus, help us to serve, help make us servants.
And um, our body of Christ here, we rely on your tithes and offerings. So if you would like to give, we have collection boxes located in the foyer as you enter the ch- and as you enter the church. You can also uh, send a check in the mail or online at sbpc.org. On the home page, click on the yellow donate button where you can contribute through debit or credit or PayPal. We thank all those who so faithfully support the ministries of our church. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for the generous gifts given to support your ministries. We ask your blessings upon it and that it will be used wisely to further your kingdom. Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. Thank you for your abundant blessings. Thank you for a joyous Father's Day celebration last week. We honor all the fathers here and especially honor you, our beloved Heavenly Father. Thank you today as we celebrate the graduations of Madeline Chun, of James Vandervet, and of Monica Vandervet. We praise you for their hard work and perseverance and ask that you give them strength and fill them with your spirit as you continue to guide them in their future endeavors. Thank you that our dear sister, Julie Sue, was able to attend Christopher's three-day wedding celebration last week. We pray for her now as she is experiencing much pain in her lung. Please guide her doctors as they help manage her pain. We pray for her comfort and ask for your healing hand upon her. Thank you for the life of Pastor Waylon Wong, for the way he spent his life so passionately serving you and spreading your word, and for the years he spent ministering to us here at South Bay Presbyterian Church. Thank you for yesterday's poignant celebration of his life. Please give peace and comfort to Clara and his family as they adjust to life without him. We pray for others in our church family who have recently lost loved ones, and for those who are ill, for those who are in need of care, and for those who are care providers. Please give them all strength, and may they know the power of your presence, your comfort, and your peace. Please be with Grace Morimoto as she is going to undergo hip surgery this coming Thursday, June 29th, in the early morning. Um, We ask that the surgery goes smoothly and for a quick quick recovery. Dear Lord, please continue to bless our church as we navigate through this transitional period. Thank you for the guidance you provide to Pastor Chris and Session as they work to determine our church's unique calling. Thank you for our church family, for each one here today, online as well as in person. Please fill each one of us with your spirit and give us the strength and courage to daily be a witness of your love so that through your power, we can use our unique abilities and talents to further your kingdom. These things we pray in your holy name. Amen. Okay, so as we leave this place, let's go with a desire to be part of the body and use the gifts that God has given us to serve others. So through our service, may God's light shine. Shine, Jesus, shine. Let's all rise and sing our closing song here.
That's a special song to me. I attended a, um, I was on a mission trip in Europe, and Graham Kendrick was our conference worship leader, and he had just written this song, <laughs> and we were all singing it for the first time, and it was powerful, so thank you. That kind of brings back some, some good memories for me. Well, friends, if you are here last week, we talked about how the Holy Spirit shapes each one of us to become the person that God has for us to be. But just as important, God is shaping all of us together into the body of Christ. You have the Spirit, you are part of the body, and you are indispensable. Never forget that. Friends, as you go, receive this blessing. May the love of God our Father, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may the peace of the Holy Spirit be upon each one of you today and forevermore. Amen. Amen.